Hey, in today's video I would like to talk about alternative fuels. What are the costs and what are the effects of using LPG, CNG or biodiesel on our cars? We'll find out right in this video. Okay, so I would like to start with LPG because it's the most commonly used in Europe. I suppose it's also being used in the United States or in other countries, but in Europe LPG is really, really used a lot. For those who don't know, LPG stands for liquid petroleum gas and it can be used in petrol engines, just in petrol engines, uh, it can be used in uh, diesel engines. Uh, the pros for using LPG stands in an inexpensive system which in Europe costs around 500-600 euros to install. The engine basically starts on gasoline and after the coolant heats up to over 30 degrees Celsius, the system uh, switches to LPG automatically, so you don't have to do anything at all. Uh, the pros of using LPG Obviously, it's more fuel efficient and more cost efficient. Uh, there is no engine knocking. Uh, having LPG, it's a gas. Uh, we have 100% dry combustion, and there is no engine knocking as we would have in traditional gasoline engines. We don't have nitrous oxides. We don't have sulfur oxides. We don't have any kind of those harmful exhaust gases. Now, you're probably wondering why manufacturers haven't still used this uh, alternative fuel as standard on production cars. And to be honest, a few manufacturers have been using uh, LPG as produc for production cars uh, on Dacia, uh, Suzuki and I know a few other brands which use LPG on production cars. Now, running on LPG has its downsides. It reduces the life of the engine or its reliability. And that's because having a completely dry combustion will burn off valves and it will also uh, burn off the spark plugs. So if you're running on LPG, you will need to use iridium spark plugs, which are pretty expensive. And you will need to uh, pay close attention to the valves. Uh, running on LPG isn't meant to drive aggressively, so you should be driving only, let's say, below 4000 RPM. If you constantly drive over 4000 RPM, at some point you will destroy the engine. Uh, and that's because, again, uh, the combustion is pretty dry and the heat released by burning LPG is pretty much the same as you would burn gasoline. So you're basically increasing consumption and you have a dry combustion and this will kill the engine over time. Now to be honest, I've seen engines which ran on LPG for over 500,000 kilometers and they were just fine. And I have seen engines in different cars which ran or have been running on LPG only for a few thousand kilometers and they already had issues so it depends from engine to engine uh, i would normally you could normally fit lpg systems in turbocharged engines uh, direct injection engines but i would use lpg only if i would have a natural gas created engine and if you would buy a brand new car having lpg straight from the factory it would have a natural gas created engine it fits best this kind of system. Now if we move forward to CNG or compressed natural gas, uh, it's a great way to save money and burn a natural fuel. Uh, CNG can be used in both gasoline and diesel engines. In fact, in my city there are buses which are currently running on CNG and they promote uh, using CNG. So it's a funny way to encourage people to use alternative fuels. Uh, it's fuel efficient, in fact, it's more, it's even more fuel efficient compared to LPG and it, it doesn't kill the engine over time. Uh, of course, less emissions, just like in LPG, uh, you don't have that much 
uh, CO2 and other harmful exhaust gases are also eliminated by using CNG. And in case you didn't know, Audi used a few years ago and I think they're still using, they're still selling the G-Tron series which you can find on the A3, A4 and A5 if I'm not wrong. Uh, it has, in the A3 it has a 1.4 TFSI engine with CNG right from the factory. It has 110 horsepower. It has a uh, fuel capacity for gasoline around 50 liters and a uh, fuel capacity for CNG around 14 kilograms. Now having CNG on your car is pretty expensive. It has expensive maintenance and you need to have a pressurized system which has to have around 200 bars and to have this system will increase the weight of the car and you can't really have uh, containers too big so 14 kilograms is just the maximum that they could have made for an A3. Uh, now the fuel consumption for this kind of alternative fuel CNG uh, from what I've seen from Audi uh, it varies from 3 to 5 kilograms per 100 kilometers which in my opinion is pretty great. Now the downsides of using CNG is that we don't have so many uh, CNG stations. In Romania there are only two CNG stations, one of which is in my uh, hometown. And in other European countries as well there are not so many CNG stations. There are a few countries which have increased the number of CNG stations of which are uh, Italy and Germany but there are countries in which you can barely find any CNG station so if you have an Audi G-Tron you will be and you're traveling around Europe you will be forced to recharge your CNG uh, station pretty rarely and then to run on gasoline so it's not really fancy. Uh, before we go into costs I would like to also discuss about biodiesel. Uh, it's obtained from different plants and uh, through fermentation actually and even if you didn't know you're actually running on biodiesel right now oil sellers are forced to use a small percentage of biodiesel uh, i've actually read the etiquette on uh, the diesel fuel that i can find in the gas station and most uh, diesel fuels have four percent uh, biodiesel into them so you can use this you can increase this percentage up to 20% I guess uh, you can't use pure biodiesel on current diesel engines which have common rail injection systems because the pressure is just too high around 2000 at most over 2000 atmospheres and you can not really use biodiesel at that pressure uh, older generation diesel engines with which had uh, injection pressures of around 100 bars or atmospheres uh, could use pure vegetal oil uh, or pure biodiesel. So if you have a brand new diesel engine, you are you are using biodiesel even if you don't want to. Uh, oil sellers are forced to use a small percentage of biofuel, but I've seen in other countries, I think in Germany, I've seen uh, be, it's a separate fuel pump biodiesel in which you have around 15 to 20 percent biodiesel and the rest is standard diesel fuel. Now let's talk about costs and prices. If you would have a 2 liter gasoline engine, the average fuel consumption it would be anywhere between 7 to 8 liters per 100 kilometers. I have approximated 8 liters per 100 kilometers. If you would have a 2 liter diesel engine, the fuel consumption would be around 5 to 6 liters per 100 kilometers. I have taken as an example 5.5 and my dad actually has a Suzuki Grand Vitara with an LPG uh, system. It has an exactly 2 liter naturally aspirated gasoline engine with LPG and it's an SUV. Uh, the average fuel consumption is around 11 
uh, I have taken 10 as an example because I'm trying to approximate for a regular passenger car with a normal weight, not for an SUV. And 10 liters per 100 kilometers for LPG. And for CNG, I have taken the value for the Audi A3 G-Tron, which has an average uh, fuel consumption of CNG of around 4 kilograms per 100 kilometers. And I have obtained the following costs. I have used the prices that I currently have in my country and these prices, if I'm not wrong, are pretty much the same across Europe. I know that in the United States, prices for gasoline are much, uh, much lower uh, compared to this of values. I think in the United States, the gasoline price is around $2 per gallon. In Europe or in Romania, if you want to run on pure gasoline, you will need around $10 per 100 kilometers. If you want to run on diesel fuel, you will need approximately $7 per 100 kilometers. Uh, on LPG, $5.6 per 100 kilometers. And for CNG, 3.5 approximately per 100 kilometers. I have also mentioned the costs of electricity, 0.15. Uh, dollars per kilowatt hour and in case you didn't know an electric car has a fuel consumption between 13 and 17 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers the e-golf has around 14 uh, tesla model p has uh, around 17 kilowatts hour per 100 kilometers now if you take a closer look Driving pure electric vehicles is the cheapest way to go. It's around $2.5 per 100 kilometers, but the car itself is much more expensive compared to the other conventional cars. Now, if you have any other questions regarding this subject, please leave them down below. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already for more car videos, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.